Hey, how's it going and welcome to another Jojo June video. All right, so we are nearing the end of Jojo June and I figured I would get you guys involved and ask you to make your own stand. If you want to get involved in some more like community events like this, consider becoming a channel member and joining the members server. But yeah, I'm excited to check these out. I've kind of skimmed through it, so I've seen a lot of like the visual like designs of the stands, but I don't really know almost any of their abilities. So yeah, let's check it out. Starting with my own stand. So this stand is something that I've kind of had as like a very rough concept for many, many years. Like, the ability in my head has always been pretty solidified, but it's only recently when it got an actual design. You'll see it a little bit later, but huge, huge shout out to Fib for designing my stand. Like, that's also what you see in the thumbnail. But yeah, let's check it out. Stand name, Dangerous. Appearance, a skeletal humanoid stand. Its most defining feature are its prominent pink discs on every opposable joint. Half of its face and torso are covered in a purple cloak with the exposed half having a viciously angry expression. But yeah, this is what it looks like. Dude, look at how fucking killer this thing looks, bro. This is actually so much fun to design. Like, for basically every little detail, he provided me with like four or five different options for patterns and just like colors and kind of the way things look. So yeah, it was really fun. Huge, huge shout out to Fib for making this. This is the coolest fucking thing ever, bro. Ability, joint rupturing. Dangerous has the ability to violently rupture a target's joint. To activate this ability, the user cracks their own joint, and if the target is within a line of sight, that same joint will be damaged. For example, a finger being cracked will rupture the opponent's own finger. This damage is enough to leave that part of the body broken or severely hurt. Any connecting body part can be injured in this way. Yeah, so this ability is inspired by a very bad habit of mine where ever since I've been like a little, little kid, I've like compulsively cracked my joints. Like, I'll crack my thumb for you right now. Oh yeah. I don't know if that picked up on the mic or not. Ooh. Ow, that one kind of hurt. But yeah, I've been doing that for, like, for as long as I can remember. I've gotten pretty good at it. I can crack, like, almost every, like, connecting joint in my body. And part of the kind of, like, idea behind it is, like, for my entire life, people have always told me, like, if you keep doing that, you're gonna break your fingers or your joints are gonna disconnect or whatever. So I kind of thought, like, that would be cool if that was true, but, like, for the opposite way around. So, like, I crack my index finger and your index finger just, like, basically explodes. And I thought about this very thoroughly. So the reason why the, the stand is named Dangerous is if you've ever listened to the song, it's a Michael Jackson song. It has this really, really distinctive beat where it basically goes like, bah, bah, bah. I'm not going to play a sample for you because it's a fucking Michael Jackson song and I don't want to lose my channel. But yeah, if you just listen to the song, you'll hear it. But I imagine that like bah, kind of sound that plays is like the noise that it makes when your own, like when your joint gets ruptured. And fitting in with the Michael Jackson theming, the, the Stan has a sub ability called Gone Too Soon. Originally, this ability was just like, it had the like prototype name of Danger Mode. And I was looking through the Dangerous album to see if there was any song that kind of fit and I saw Gone Too Soon and I was like, dude, that sounds fucking rad. So yeah, Gone Too Soon, a sub ability of Dangerous. Activated by the user cracking their neck, which temporarily disables the joint rupturing ability. Gone Too Soon deploys a neurotoxin throughout the target's body with it originating from any joint that was previously damaged. This toxin slowly spreads throughout the target's body, making their brain incapable of recognizing the damaged muscles and moving them. If the toxin reaches the brain, it leaves the target completely incapacitated, as they are unable to move any part of their body. Gone Too Soon does not require a line of sight and instead affects the entire area within its range. So yeah, when I was designing the stand, I kind of came to the realization that like, if I just crack my neck, that kind of just kills somebody, right? So I thought that was a little bit busted. So instead, I decided that, like, cracking the neck would switch on a different ability that basically poisons you to death. And also for designing these, I wanted everybody to come up with a weakness, because I feel like this is something that, like, when designing abilities, people don't really think about as much. It's like, okay, what sucks about this? And I also think having, like, weaknesses and limitations for shit adds a lot of character. So for weaknesses, the stand cannot be activated unless the user has a clear line of sight with the enemy. Additionally, the ability is limited by its ammo, as it cannot be used on the same body part until the user's own joint is able to be cracked again. Gone too soon leaves the user unable to defend themselves, until the ability can be switched off again, which requires a second crack of the neck. Also, I'm probably not going to be checking out the stand stats, like, in too much detail. You can check them out and see them if you want, but, you know, I have a lot of these to go through, and when it comes to stand stats, like, stand stats are very obtuse. So yeah, just to save myself some time, I probably won't be reading through those. Alright, let's check them out. I've been excited to actually read these, so... 
From Lady Vera, this stand is named Heart. Stand user, how do you say this? Crescetta Pirata? I guess I said that right. Physical appearance, Heart. Namesake Heart, the American rock band. Is a humanoid close range power type stand with revolver barrels on its index fingers and chambers on the back of its hands. Sounds badass. While its body primarily is white, it has a red arrowhead shape on its chest. Its eyes are entirely red and protruding from the sides of its head. The stand also has two large white ears poking out in the back of its head in a triangular hook shape, as well as a red unicorn horn on the center of its head. The stand also has two ridges between its shoulders and the back of its head resembling hair. The stand itself is mildly muscular and it has a thin but large red lightning bolt mark on each of its arms and legs. See, I guess I'll just pull up the art right here. Yo, this looks fucking sick. Yo, this design goes hard. I like this a lot. I like its like hair kind of stuff. It sort of looks like fins, right? Yeah, this is rad. The user's really cool too. I like the like playing card kind of motif going on. Abilities, fire starter. Heart is capable of shooting a small beam that travels nearly instantly to a target in Parada's line of sight. Range is irrelevant, she only needs to see the target and ignites it. Any object can be lit on fire, regardless of its actual flammability. The only requirement is that Parada can see the object, thus even things such as water or smoke can be lit on fire. That's pretty cool, it's kind of like uh, like a long range version of uh, Speed King from Jajolion. Although Speed King is more about heat instead of like fire, but yeah, that's pretty cool. Eternal Flame. Heart's fires spread from wherever they start and can only be put out when Parada wills them to be put out, even remaining if she's knocked unconscious. As the flames are range irrelevant, if Parada leaves the area, the fire will still remain. Parada is immune to the damage from Heart's fire. If she so chooses, she can light herself on fire, but she will not be physically harmed by her own flames. Sounds like a very dangerous fucking stand. Weakness. Although Parada can be accurate in what exactly she ignites, the fires themselves cannot be controlled after they are made. They will spread completely naturally with zero regard for Parada's input. The only command she can give the fires are to start and put them out. That's it. Parada must also be able to see the object in order to light on fire. While she can light water on fire, she can't light air on fire, for example. Additionally, when Parada puts out her flame, she must put all of them out at once. She cannot individually select fires to put out. She must also be conscious to put out the fires, otherwise they'll continue to spread. Finally, while her stand's fires will not hurt her, they otherwise cannot be distinguished uh, friend from foe, and they will hurt her allies and any civilians just as much any enemy she would fight. Bro, if you were my ally, I would be fucking scared shitless. <laughs> this stand, this sounds awesome and this sounds so, so scary, dude. But yeah, this one's really, really cool. I like it a lot. The art is very good. All right, from Nicodemus Edwards, Space Oddity. Space Oddity takes a roughly humanoid form with a thin androgynous frame and a soft face with large black eyes and a small mouth. Standing about seven feet tall with mucus coated skin, covered by studded bands uh, and jewelry of gold, rubies, and jade done in a distinctly Mayan style. Atop its head is a jellyfish-shaped grove with many wide seaweed-like tentacles flowing off and often obscuring most of its body when they aren't spread out, keeping only its face visible. That sounds really spooky, bro. Abilities, Outvader. Outvader enables Space Oddity to thrust its tentacles into a human or stand and take on their appearance and abilities. Kind of lewd. Copy copying the unique powers of a stand with one of its tentacles. It can then wrap its body in one of the tentacles, taking on the rough appearance of that stand, albeit retaining many of Space Oddity's physical qualities, as if the copied stand is being worn or has been turned into armor or clothing. They gain both its unique ability and a boost to their own capabilities, although this boost is basic to things like power, speed, and stamina, and will not be equal to the original. The user can only copy a limited number of powers at a time, and will have to discard some for new ones by severing a tentacle. Weakness. On its own, Space Oddity is physically very weak and easily defeated. Furthermore, it stores its copied abilities within its tentacles, so if severed by an opponent, it will lose them. This sounds pretty cool. This sounds like, this sounds pretty busted, but like, yeah, just imagine the idea you have like on one tentacle is like, this is star platinum tentacle. And over here, I have crazy diamond tentacle. From Toby, we have get lucky. Appearance, a little goblin looking dude with casino chips for eyes and a coin that it flips. The namesake is get lucky by Daft Punk. Abilities, raise luck, reduce luck. Raise luck, get lucky has the ability to greatly increase the luck of anyone it pleases. This has benefits both in battle and out of battle. In battle, unnatural occurrences will more likely happen to an enemy. For example, getting struck by lightning. Outside of battle, the massacre can use it to help your friends win the lottery, score with a love interest, or just general lucky things. 
Reduce Luck. Get Lucky has the ability to heavily reduce the luck of its enemy. It's the complete opposite of what Raise Luck does. Those unusual circumstances will happen to those affected by Reduce Luck. Weaknesses being a support type stand, Get Lucky is very weak physically, but still incredibly powerful, like Abakio's Moody Blues. If you do end up against it, then you'll likely beat it. See, I've been wanting to make another trip to Vegas. I went to Vegas a couple of years ago. Toby, come with me and bring Get Lucky, okay? All right, from Jaycroft, stand name All Star. Appearance, a giant blue star that can be worn on the user's back with a fist on each ending point. The fists are the other colors of the rainbow. All Star can create up to five holographic screens up to one or two feet away from the user that can act as any electronic device that uses a screen. Oh no, it's a boomer's worst nightmare. These screens can be independent or linked to other electronic devices to act as them. The screens have their own Wi-Fi that they can only connect to themselves. If All Star connects to another user's device through methods such as chat rooms or phone calls, All Star is able to use one of the five screens to either create a 3D map of the room one of the other people is in, or make a profile of a person in the chat room. Though the more people in the room, the longer it takes to get one person's data. This profile will list name, age, date of birth, and city or country. If the person is a stand user, it will also create a stand profile, showing the stand's name, its user, the appearance, its stats, Similar to a stand splash screen, but not their powers. In a pinch, All Star can be thrown like a shuriken, though it does not travel very far and is very weak. Weakness, the screens are very weak and can be destroyed with a simple punch. Though destroying a screen will paralyze the destroyer for one second for each screen destroyed. Attempting to use too many screens for a long period of time can mentally drain the user. If the user is electrocuted, all screens disappear at once and the paralysis will affect the user. I like this stand a lot. I think this is really, really cool. Bro, if Diavolo knew this stand existed, he would be fucking shitting his pants. From Don Kiwi, stand name, Friday I'm in love. The rough appearance of an emo singer with black broken hearts for eyes and a clock face where the belly button would be. Its skin is gray with black spiky hair, blue lipstick, and dark eyeliner. Yo, Hot Topic Stan. Each of the fingers on the left has the name of a weekday on it, while the back reads Sunday and the front Saturday. The right hand only has three fingers, each being the shape of a clock's hands. The stand's abilities can conform to a day of the week, which can only be executed on that weekday making the stand highly situational. The stand's power relies heavily on creative application of the power available. Monday, blue, causes depression in every foe in range. Severity varies based on the individual. Tuesday, gray, emits poisonous fog around the stand, only harmful to enemies. Wednesday, heart attack, paralyzes opponents or specific limbs. Thursday, stay in bed, puts enemies to sleep. Friday, I'm in love, makes enemies fall in love with a stand user. Saturday, wait, momentarily stops time for one second for a few opponents. Can be used repeatedly, though with diminishing returns if it's the same target. Sunday, too late, slows down enemies. Lastly, there is an ability usable once a week on any day. The Cure allows the stand to heal any allies within range. Weakness, depending on the day, the stand has little to no offensive capabilities, making it easy to defeat in a one-on-one -on -one scenario. Confusing or rushing down the opponent is an easy way of overwhelming it. Alright, from Desi, we have Once in a Lifetime. Physical appearance, a blob of salt water wearing four red masks displaying different emotions can vary greatly in size depending on how much salt water is present. Once in a lifetime is capable of creating illusions that dulls a target's senses and grasp on reality by flinging a part of its viscous body into the nerves of a targeted sensory organ of the target. For example, it can enter a person's eyes or ears to make them see or hear things that aren't really there. It might cover their target's hands and convince them through their sense of touch that they aren't holding a weapon any longer. It could cover a whole body and force it to believe that it's falling, etc. Weakness, once in a lifetime, is only capable of being summoned in the presence of salt water. Any water containing enough saline content will work, but it is especially potent when using seawater, and particularly that from the bottom of the ocean. If fresh water or no water at all is present, once in a lifetime cannot do anything. I wonder if one could use their tears to summon him in small amounts. I like the idea that you're like, you're like Gara from Naruto, you know how he carries around his big gourd full of sand? I imagine you're doing that, but it's like an aquarium full of salt water. That'd be sick, dude, that'd be so fucking menacing. Some stand user walks up, he's got a whole ass aquarium on his back. You're like, oh my god, what is he gonna do? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> from Balls. Stand name, Among Us Musical, full version. Ability, espionage and sabotage. Stand user, Joe Biden. Umfub is an imposter. 
Oh fuck, my mind has been destroyed. I just laugh and I see that I just see that word and I laugh. Meaning it has the ability to change its form given the situation. <laughs> this ability allows for the sussy Baka to be unrivaled in fights where it has the chance to sneak behind enemy lines and do a little trolling. I like the idea of seeing that like in the little like brackets that Araki uses to emphasize stuff, but it's little trolling. It is able to venture a decent way from the stand user while still being at full power. It is not made for head-on combat, but its knife allows it to defend itself if need be. Just carries around a fucking knife. Most any stand will be able to take it on in a head-to-head -head fight. So the stand user must be smart to not allow the crewmates <laughs> to, cry, to catch on to what they're doing. It is, however, fast. If given an opportunity, Almfuv will be able to slip out of close combat and retreat to a safer place. It's got a lot of abilities. Imposter zeal is is what allows Umfuv to alter its form. This ability is, is imperative for reconnaissance missions where it can blend into its surroundings. Imposter zeal also has the unique property of non-stand users being able to see it when it is morphed. This sounds like an inherent weakness initially, but this means that stand users will not be able to know if it is in fact a stand or not by having a non-stand user nearby to see if they cannot see it. The main purpose of this skill is deception. One must fool all around for a perfect assassination attempt to succeed. Ability 2, Mysterious Occurrence. The ability is one that is rather hard to comprehend for a normal stand user, such as the person reading this Lamau fucking loser. I'm just gonna ignore that. Almfuv has the ability to periodically release a strange wave of power that has the potential de to deactivate any electronic device in the area. This allows for the locking of electronic doors, potentially trapping an unsuspecting victim. The shutdown of lights, leaving all in the dark while Umfuv executes his business. For any who may oppose Umfuv, they would do well to avoid areas that are rife with electronic devices. Rather, their attack be sabotaged. Strangely, however, the time limit after using this seems almost random. But some say there is a mysterious host that controls the time intervals. Whatever that means. <laughs> Ability 3. Sussy Baka. This is how Umfuv eliminates most of its targets. Sussy Baka is a power that allows Umfuv to eliminate victims seamlessly. This too, however, operates on the same time intervals as Mysterious Occurrence. So in a short amount of time, Umfuv won't be able to seamlessly eliminate too many victims, which means it will have to rely on its normal attacks. Weakness, close quarter combat. Being in close proximity to an opponent is incredibly dangerous for Umfuv. It does not want to be caught off guard because it will have a hard time fending off strong opponents who can beat it down quicker than it can escape. I feel like I just lost a clump of brain matter reading that. Lost play, stand, imagine. Appearance, no physical appearance. Ability, shape-shifting. The shape-shifting ability allows the user to change any part of them into any object they have touched. Oh my god, there's not a single period in this whole paragraph. Let's see if I can read this in one go. Any limb he wants can transform into anything they have touched. They can even turn their whole body into an object, but there are drawbacks. If the object breaks, the damage on where it happened will reflect back on the user, which makes sense. But if you also, if for example, you turned your hand into a pistol and created a preloaded chamber, those bullets have to come from somewhere, so it'll take something like parts of your figures into those bullets. So you can't just have infinite ammo, because it'll take something from you to make your own ammo. Also, the weight of an object is the same, so you can't just make your hand into a hundred pound dumbbell and easily bash someone's head in, because it would be too heavy. But yeah, this is pretty cool. It reminds me of, like, Kunum, but instead of turning into people, you, like, turn parts of your body into objects. And I like the idea that, like, it, it'll, it'll turn into the object, but it won't get anything that goes with it. Like, turning it into a gun, you don't actually get ammo. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Alright, here we go from my girlfriend, good old Balls Lover 32 Stand name, Wolf Girl. Physical appearance, Wolf Girl takes the appearance of a cell phone charm in the shape of a schoolgirl with a wolf head. Ability, Wolf Girl gives the user animalistic strength similar to a werewolf when it feels the user is threatened. Wolf Girl greatly weakens when not in 5 feet proximity to the user. Will refuse to work if the charm is broken or damaged in any way. See, I know you drew it. Yeah, here it is. Yo, look how cute that is. Or here's a close-up of the thing. Yo, look how cute that is. But yeah, that's a cool idea. I really like the idea of a stand that's just this like little tiny little charm looking thing. Alright, JJ Ninja, stand, Lincoln Park. Physical appearance, a pair of headphones with attitude. Ability, it makes the user invisible to human perception when vibing to the stand sounds. <laughs> if you expose the edge of the stand's music to anyone but the user, they begin suffering from a phenomenon called relatable, resulting in them crying edgy tears. Weakness, exposure to the stand can affect the user if they aren't a fan of edgy music. 
probably emo stand, in my place. Physical appearance, a man in a suit and trench coat wearing leather gloves with his face wrapped in gray bandages. Can create a portal to a pocket dimension by touching any surface as long as the surface is big enough. And he closes the portal by snapping his fingers. The minimum size of the portal is 2x2 two two feet and the maximum is 8x8. Eight eight. The pocket dimension is 100x100 100 100 feet and can take the appearance of whatever the user desires. Anything put in the pocket dimension will stay there until taken out by the user. The stand can move up to 20 feet away from its user. If the user goes in the pocket dimension, he must come out in the same place he set the portal. Weakness must touch a surface to create a portal and has little to no offensive capability. Cannot be used to teleport as you must enter and leave in the same spot. See, you say this has like little offensive capability, but this actually sounds super fucking dangerous. Cause like you could just open up a portal and like kick a dude in there and just leave them in there until they die. And they have no way of getting out. Alright, from POTWS rank. Stand, dead or alive. The stand is independent and its previous user is unknown. The stand itself is without a true form, only ever seen imitating pre-existing humans. However, when it's expelled from a human, it appears as a tall, dark, ominous figure that quickly vanishes into thin air. Abilities, DOA can transform itself into almost any human it wishes to. However, it can only do so once it has killed the individual and placed its soul into a capsule. Then, DOA is able to accurately replicate the person's appearance, voice, and even their stand. The stand is able to inject the soul into itself at any time, making it beyond ideal in any fight. The souls themselves are subject to endless torture as they are forced to share a singular human body and cannot even progress as far as purgatory. Bro, that's fucking metal. It's like some full metal alchemist shit. Weakness, DOA can only use each soul once, meaning that instantly after injecting a different soul, the previous one is terminated from existence. Additionally, if DOA's body and vessel is wounded, its own essence gradually exits the body depending on how deep the wound is. What it loses is permanent and it affects its speed, damage, and overall combat efficiency. Using a reasonably attained body can halt the effect, however, it cannot be reversed. Upon losing its essence, it vanishes into thin air like ashes being spread into the wind. Fucking spooky ass Stan. Alright, from Ren Kurogane. Stan name, Beelzeboss. Appearance, a swarm stand consisting of millions of crimson red flies and gnats. Ew. Abilities, Beelzeboss can rip into the opponent's flesh, laying eggs in the process which hatch almost instantly, controlling said opponent's body. Weakness, while somewhat quick, the insects individually are quite easy to destroy. Fire is probably your best bet. Bro, this is a brutal stand. Like, yeah, like you said, fire is probably your best bet. I'd imagine, like, most stand users that are, like, canon would probably not have a good way of dealing with this. You know, even somebody like Jotaro with Star Platinum would probably struggle dealing with a million flies. So yeah, very, very scary stand. All right, from Maxi, stand name, dreams come true. Physical appearance, humanoid, wears a biker helmet with spikes pointing behind, body armor with triangular patterns, and buckled boots. Abilities, momentum exchange. Dreams come true can take the momentum something has and swap it with another things. For example, if the user were to be shot with a bullet, dreams come true could give the bullet's momentum to a nearby flower pot, effectively making the bullet stop on the spot and fall to the ground while flinging the pot away. Momentum boost. The user can apply this momentum exchange on himself, allowing for what is effectively flight by chaining momentum exchanges with himself and high inertia items. It can also serve to strengthen attacks by changing their momentum with that of a high speed item or weaken them by changing it with a slower items. Truth Detection Dreams Come True is capable of detecting whether someone is lying or not based on the momentum of their heartbeat and blood flow. Hamon Flail Hamon Flail Dreams Come True wields a flail with a spinning blade at the end. This can be used as a traditional flail or as a means of building up momentum on the spot by spinning the flail. This momentum can then be applied for the momentum exchange in different ways. The flail itself can be used as a means of extending the reach of the user's hamon. Weakness, cramped rooms. The hamon flail requires a minimum amount of space to be able to spin adequately. Otherwise, it's unusable for momentum generation. Law of equivalent exchange. Dreams come true's momentum exchange cannot be spontaneous. It requires specifically two items to swap momentum between, otherwise it cannot be used. Perception, momentum exchange can only be applied on items the user is conscious of. Any surprise attacks cannot be denied with momentum exchange unless the user is aware of them before they connect. Yeah, I like this one a lot. I think this is really cool. This definitely feels like a very, like, a rocky stand. Like, this just feels like something he probably would have done at this point. Like, craft work is the only thing I can think of that's sort of similar, but like, his wasn't really a momentum exchange. 
But I think my favorite little ability is actually the truth detection. That kind of caught me off guard by how kind of clever it is. Because, yeah, like, he's basically just a walking polygraph test. Like, if you can tell how fast their heart is beating, then, yeah, you can tell if they're lying or not. So, so yeah, this is a cool one. I like this one a lot. Knock Iron Tarkus. Stand name, Feedbacker. References the album Feedbacker by Japanese experimental band Boris. Feedbacker takes the form of a humanoid being seemingly made out of water. Has a head shape like a frog's and when deployed has a string tethered to its user made of TV static. Ability, Feedbacker has the ability to place 12 inch circular discs on the ground that turn invisible when deployed. When stepped on, the disc materializes as a pink vinyl record and beams a constant stream of extremely harsh noise into the afflicted's brain. The volume of the noise is controlled by the user's approximate distance to the afflicted, and if extremely close to the afflicted, it can be fatal if exposed for too long. Weakness, the discs and noise have a time limit. If deployed, the disc can only remain on the ground for 43 minutes and 51 seconds. That's extremely specific. As does the noise when activated. I'm gonna take a wild guess and say the reason why it's that long is because that's how long the album is that it's named after. I just have a sneaking suspicion that's the case, but... The noise being controlled by distance means that if it's far away enough, the noise could be barely audible to the afflicted. Alright, from Crit Never Cringe, Stan, Blind Guardian. Physical appearance, imagine a centaur. Now imagine that centaur's human half was actually a spider with a Roman soldier's helmet attached- uh, Wait, what? Attached to its fanged maw. Its spider legs still aided them emerge from their torso all dripping silk from their ends. Right, so he's less of a centaur and more of just like a whole ass spider on top of a horse. <laughs> That's horrifying. Ability, Blind Guardian can create silk barriers around things. Ability, Blind Guardian can create silk barriers around things. Simple shapes are easiest. Complete ones like a person's physical profile could take hours to accomplish. What these barriers do is skip a specified item across the intervening space, making what's inside unaffected. A bullet could be designated and if it crosses a circle of silk, it immediately emerges from the other side, not having crossed the space within. Only one type of item can be designated for a barrier creation at a time, and the item designated must be a somewhat specific thing. You cannot just say all matter or even all living matter, but any human or any bird of prey would be specific enough. Weaknesses, Blind Guardian has almost no offensive ability whatsoever. Not without somehow trapping someone in a multi-circle barrier arrangement that cuts off a person's leaving. Oxygen entering and other nonsense. At most, the user can perform ambushes using their barriers. Okay, so if I'm understanding this right, it basically creates like specific object shaped portals. So let's say I want like a chicken sandwich, for example. You could just like draw the shape of like a chicken sandwich basically and then it would show up. If so, that's pretty cool. I would, like, I would not mind having this as a stand at all. That sounds very useful. All right, Zenobia, stand name, Dolls in Pseudo Paradise. Appearance, takes the form of a somewhat large book that's visible to spectators, but is not a bound stand. Ability, life imitates art. The stand's most prominent ability is that it can bring whatever Eno draws in it to life, in the flesh and all, and not in a paper form as it was drawn in. There are many constraints, namely that the, the degree of effort and soul put into the drawing, not necessarily more realistic looking, the more powerful the creation will be. It does not have to be a summon, she can draw her enemy being struck by a tank shell and the book will fire a shell at them. The drawing is not limited to copyright. She can draw Superman with the appropriate super strength, but if she does not draw him using heat vision, then he will not have it when summoned by her. The pages of the book will never run out. She can use any drawing utensil she desires as well. The book itself is also quite durable and does not take damage from non-stands. Some things are more intuitive and some can somewhat bypass the strict only the ability shown rule of d. For example, she can summon an AK-47 and it will summon the rifle with all of its characteristics. This is mainly applying to things that exist physically and are not fantastical like casting a fireball. Summons will act about as autonomously as a puppet or doll. Pages torn out of the book will still work, but they can't be connected to any other paper's effects, including the back. To activate them, she just needs to fold the paper in half. This will not activate the back if it's drawn to. To activate them, she just needs to fold the paper in half. The book must be shut completely to activate. A bookmark can thus delay infinitely a particular page. If she is drawing something who already exists, she only needs to match their physical characteristics, but not to a T. Simply that and drawing them in mind will count. She can likewise create a clone instead by thinking of it that way. Weaknesses, there are many constraints when drawing to life. Namely, a summoner spell will only have characteristics that were 
were drawn in it, and more powerful drawings will take conscious effort to control, otherwise they will simply unravel. She can't just draw Superman destroying a planet, it will simply KO her, but she can draw a mecha suit fighting a monster capable of destroying chunks of a city and be able to summon both, though it will be a pain to keep them active for long. The drawing must represent something. The thing will only have abilities that were displayed in the drawing, she cannot cheat by writing them out in one. Only two pages can be active at a time. She confirms the casting by closing the book and when she opens it again they will immediately vanish, though their damage will remain. If she wishes to draw the two papers as if they are a series she made, but the next two will have different abilities. So if she draws on one hand Superman with heat vision and on the next create uh, has portal creation by Naruto running, it will happen. While damage on summons is not reflected back to her, they can often be surprisingly easy to kill unless Eno draws the thing in question taking, say, a rocket to the face. If she is KO'd, the effects of her stand will disappear until she casts new pages. What she draws on a page is not necessarily preordained. Someone's head getting blown off will simply fire a bullet at said person large enough to do so, but they can still dodge it. This is a deeply busted stand. <laughs> Holy shit. It's basically like a controlled version of Bohemian Rhapsody. Like, you can just draw fucking Gurren Lagan and then, like, that's it. Like, obviously, there's a kind of a limitation on how powerful the thing can be, but, like, yeah, this one is fucking busted. Lady Ina Minayo says, Lady Ina Minayo with the stand name System Down. System Down takes the appearance of a large electronic keyboard and turntable which encircles the user. Ability System Down acts the same as a standard keyboard or turntable, in that it allows the user to create and play music with it, and can also, I guess you meant to say like allowed, or allows, allows existing tracks to be mixed and played. The supernatural abilities come in with regards to the music. When the music from System Down is playing, time accelerates or slows down in accordance with the BPM of the music, with 60 BPM being normal time, ignoring the stand user, of course. The keyboard and turntable itself can be dismissed while the music is still playing, and this will not stop the music from playing. Additionally, any cued tracks will also play when they're supposed to as if nothing has changed. Weakness. While powerful, the obvious weakness of System Down is that in order to have it work effectively, the user must be competent with music making and mixing. Existing tracks fed into the stand will have no supernatural effect unless mixed with one or more other tracks. Alright, from Russ, stand name, Long Stick Goes Boom. Abilities, allows the user to emit sounds and control its frequencies. The volume doesn't exceed 80 decibels and has a time limit of 5 minutes 13 seconds. Weakness, the user has to rest for the same duration of the last attack. Example, the user keeps the sound for 2 minutes, it's necessary to rest for another 2 minutes to use it again. Notes, the name is from the song Long Stick Goes Boom by Crocus. Maybe it's Crocus. Which has a duration of 5 minutes 13 seconds. Appearance is from the weapon Boner from the game Shadow of the Damned. <laughs> Boner. Similar to the finger whistle prosthetic tool from Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, but it allows the user to emit a wide range of frequencies. The user is not immune to any effects the sound may cause. Only noises can be emitted, no melodies, voices, or complex sounds can be reproduced by the stand. Possible usages are generating anti-noise like headphones with noise cancelling, disrupting the sense of balance, inducing labyrinthitis through sound. Causing dizziness, some people are affected by certain musical tones or simply a distraction. Oh, your name is currently said to please get Tower Unite, it's $14, but I know, I know you're Lemon, so... Cosmic Thrill Seekers CTS is triggered via the ingestion of a pill that acts as a hallucinogenic drug. Consensually or otherwise, oh my. This sends the victim into a drug-like experience where they will meet with CTS in its physical form. It creates and spreads a mold in the victim which will slightly inhibit their senses gradually the more it is spread. CTS's primary function is trapping targets in cycles. The cycle it creates goes as follows. Act 1, The Heart. CTS traces anyone with the mold pill inside of them as well as victims of Act 3's molding. No matter what, as long as they are in this state and within range, CTS is bound to hunt down their target. Getting close to it will simply trigger Act 2. However, Act 1 is not particularly hostile. If you can escape and remain past the stand's reach while the mold psychological effect wears off, it may eventually give up. Act 2, The Brain If you enter the 5 meter range of the stand, then Act 2 will trigger. Act 2 uses psychological warfare. It attempts to convince the victim that they will only find solace in embracing fate in the mold. It uses the weakened state of mind that the mold inflicts on the target to lull them into a false sense of hopelessness. Anyone with a strong enough resolve, as someone with a stand may have, would be able to resist these temptations. As the victim attempts to decide their fate, Act 3 will activate. Act 3, The Roar. The stand attacks with a mold seen before in the initial pill ingested by the target. 
The speed of the molt is 5 minutes for a grown adult and is slowed further by a target that resists it. If the target escapes the molding, they will simply trigger Act 1, which will use the traces of mold left by X3 attack to get an even stronger scent on the target. The cycle will continuously loop again and again until the target either dies or defeats CTS. Weakness CTS is a trial in willpower as opposed to strength. CTS is slow, weak, and relatively fragile, abusing psychological warfare instead of brute strength. CTS also requires the user to be within close proximity of the target, 5 meters, much like Act 2, for CTS to keep working, leaving it open to be outranged. As all effects of the trip wear off when the user breaks free, CDS is heavily reliant on everything going perfectly and the cycle playing out meticulously as planned. Damage to the stand still affects the user, so if the enemy defeats the stand, the user will have to take a beating themselves, which would leave them susceptible to further beating when their target regains their senses. Yeah, this one's pretty cool. I like the idea of a stand that's more like kind of a psychological or mental like battle rather than a physical one. And also I think the idea of a stand that kind of activates through like a consumable is really cool. I'm trying to think if there's any other stand that's like that where you like eat something and then like a thing happens. There might be one that I'm just blanking on, but yeah, this one's really cool. All right, from Grady, stand name, negative creep. Stand user, Gishimo. <laughs> Gishimo, a mysterious masked man in a white and black trench coat. He's basically just Q from Street Fighter. Physical appearance. It's basically Venom from Guilty Gear, but the cow is replaced with long hair to look like Kurt Cobain. The pool cue is replaced with a guitar that's got the spine of a pool cue. That sounds awesome. Abilities. Anything negative creep touches will have its momentum reset to zero. What the fuck? The galaxy moves throughout the universe at a speed close to 500,000 miles per second. Depending on the location and time of day, this will result in someone smashing into the earth at 500,000 miles a second. <laughs> Out into space or horizontal to earth for a period before leaving the earth. Rocks or other objects can be hit and used as projectiles depending on positioning and momentum. The stand has a watch that can let the user know what direction momentum is taking them. As a cheap trick, it can invert this watch to give its opponent false information. Its second ability, Bleach, can spray a white liquid from the guitar cue, <laughs> Kappa, that and once it makes contact with something, it will slowly decelerate it to zero momentum after a few seconds as opposed to instantly. Weakness, the user must keep the direction of the momentum of the galaxy in mind at all times. If the user strikes something and is in between the target and its resting point, they will have a 500,000 miles per second projectile heading straight for them and could easily be killed by their own stand's power. Bleach also takes several seconds to activate. If it touches clothing, there's plenty of time to remove it. The same can be said for the body parts affected by Bleach. The user is not immune to the substance and must disrobe if any Bleach gets on him. This one is just like a really, really unhinged version of Maxi's stand. <laughs> with him, he was like, all right, well, like, what if you exchange like the speed of a bullet with a flower pot? And you're like, okay, the galaxy moves at 500,000 miles a second. <laughs> I think you would just destroy the planet if that happened, right? Like, like if you just touch a fucking stone and it goes 500,000 miles a second into the planet? This is a really fucking scary stand, Jesus. All right, from Dirty Skeletons, Done Dirt Cheap. Stand name, Spooky Scary Skeletons. Stand user, Dr. Samuel D. Appearance, a purple skeleton with a bottleneck top in the skull. In place of a ribcage are two 4-liter containers that connect to the shoulders. The spinal cord passes down where the legs should be and instead it extends into a tail not unlike a scorpion. Ability, Bone Juice. SSS has the ability to convert any liquid within its user into a chemical compound mostly consisting of collagen and small amounts of calcium phosphate, among other elements. This is some fucking science shit. It can store a total of 8 liters of this compound in its form and has a conversion rate of 1 liter to... What? I guess that means meters. Liquids must be either ingested or already in the user's body for the conversion to take effect. SS can spray this compound out of its tail and within one minute of exiting the tail, the calcium phosphate will be hard and the compound will turn into solid bone. The tip of the stinger is prehensile, allowing the spray to alternate between wider areas or precise injections. SSS can also at will disintegrate any hardened compound for its use or for the user's benefit. SSS can also at will disintegrate any hardened compound for it or the user's benefit. Bro, look how spooky this is. Holy shit. Man, what a cute little guy. He's got like his little skeleton head. <laughs> he's, got, he's got like a ketchup bottle on his head. But yeah, I like this one. This is a cool idea. I like the idea of something that just like essentially makes bones. That's pretty awesome. All right, from Leandor, stand name, Can't Stop by Red Hot Chili Peppers. Stand user, a cocaine... <laughs> stand user, a cocaine addicted runner. 
Physical appearance, a man on fire with exhaust pipes or just exhaust pipes on your body and he's missing a finger. Abilities, the stand user challenges you to a race for who can run the longest. If you accept, exhaust pipes grow on the side of your body and you have to keep running, otherwise the exhaust pipes will heat up and you will burn to death. In the race, you can't stand still or backtrack, so you have to keep moving forward. This also applies to the stand user, so it's an endurance race. Weakness has no attacking ability and the user is vulnerable to attacks. Yo, let's check this boy out. Yo, that's pretty cool. Yo, that's pretty neat. I like the kind of like gray patterns on him. But yeah, I like that idea. That sounds like a really interesting concept for a fight. Like you can still attack and shit, so it's not just like a straight up race, but I assume since this guy is a runner and addicted to cocaine, you're probably not going to beat him in a straight up race. So it's like, oh fuck, I got to beat this guy before I like burn to death, basically. Uh, and Perky drew art of Get Lucky. That's a cool, cool little guy. I like the little like poker chips in his eyes. That's really cool. Oh, and Lemon Drew CTS. Yo, this is a cool little guy. Assu I assume he's supposed to be like a blend of the characters from The Wizard of Oz. Because he's got like a lion's lower body and then he's got like a robot, like the Tin Man's like torso. And then on top he's Scarecrow. That's really cool. All right, from Ham, we have stand name Buffalo Springfield. Physical appearance has a boombox for a head, electrical wires for a body, head of a microphone for the joints, and is very thin. Yo, he's just like me. Ability, it can perfectly copy any noises the user has heard and play it back and can play the noise through other devices that can play sound, but it must be touching the object. Weakness, it is very fragile and any flaws in the memory or sound will carry over to the playback. Alright, from Golden Dragon, we have Scorpions. Ability, it can produce poison so strong it can bypass most enemies' immunities. Scorpions can also summon Micro Scorpions. <laughs> Fucking one fear, Micro Scorpions. Uh, scorpions can summon microscorpions when it makes contact with others that inflict the poison. And when on the verge of death, it can summon scorpions from its shoulders to attack the enemy. This is why it is called scorpions and not scorpion. Immunity bypass. Scorpion's poison is so strong that even foes who are immune to poison will still get afflicted. The only creatures that cannot get infected are the undead. Weakness. Scorpions cannot be summoned or used at all during any form of precipitation. Yeah, this is a cool looking dude. I like his head a lot, that's a very stand looking head, but it's also very like insect like. Alright, from Stingy Drink, we have Absolute Territory, named after Absolute Territory by Ken Ashcorp. AT is a skinny, pale blue male figure with short white hair and bangs, as well as pure black eyes. On its neck is a massive red scarf big enough to cover the mouth. Its arms are mechanical and massive, with plastic tubing lining the arms up to its wrists. These mechanical arms are very angular, as if they belonged on a mecha with black camo as accents on certain parts. Finally, on its feet are black combat boots with red accents. Whenever it's about to use its paint, the plastic tubing will fill up with a color of said pain. Whenever it's about to use its paint, the plastic tubing will fill up with a color of said paint, as well as the iris of the eyes lighting up with the same color. Abilities, color theft and emotion manipulation. AT has the ability to remove the color from objects and convert that color into paint. This makes the object in question transparent as if it was made out of glass. This can be done with any object from a pebble to a jet plane. However, larger objects take longer to steal color from. As such, the user of AT may stop the process of color theft at any time, only leaving a portion of the object transparent. AT can store up to 5 gallons of each color at a time. Objects that have had their color stored will regain said color after 24 hours. Emotion manipulation. Once AT has acquired a sufficient amount of paint, it can shoot this paint out of its arms onto other targets. This paint is unaffected by the stand's short range once it leaves its body, and as such can be shot out about 6 feet from the stand's arm. If the paint lands on a target capable of emotion, the ability will activate, and the target will be forced to only feel one emotion depending on the color applied. The intensity and length of the ailment is dependent on how much paint is on the target, with the longest possible duration being an hour and a half. The intensity of the emotion will slowly degrade as the effect lasts. Colors cannot be combined, the new emotion will simply override the older one. Example of the colors and their emotions, red is anger, blue sadness, yellow happiness, pink lust, black fear, gray is empty or emotionless, green is calm, and orange is arrogant. Weakness. If you were to find a way to disable AT's arms, then it would essentially leave the stand defenseless and with virtually no ability. Although the robot arms can deal a lot of damage as well as taking a lot of damage, the rest of the stand is quite frail. So much so that a good blow could instantly weaken it and the user significantly. Forcing someone to feel something isn't as versatile as mind control. If a target can, for example, conquer the force fear and face AT head on, then that's just tough shit for the user. Yeah, this is a cool one. I really like the idea of like draining color from stuff. This would be some really dangerous shit if you teamed up with somebody, right? Like if you have somebody with a more traditionally like offense based stand, 
Like, that'd be a fucking dangerous combination. All right, from Tumbleweed, we have Dream Merchant. Dream Merchant's ability is to be able to purchase any object that is being sold anywhere and can place that object anywhere once purchased. For example, the stand finds a gun that is being sold in Russia. The stand purchases the gun and moves it instantly to the user's hands. You can even purchase something from scammers who don't necessarily have the object. For example, Scammer is selling the Eiffel Tower online, the stand pays the price and actually does attain the Eiffel Tower. Although the item must actually exist in the world to be bought from a scammer. Weaknesses, the stand purchases things with your money and the object cannot be bought for anything less than what the seller is willing to sell it for. So no haggling allowed. Also, Dream Merchant automatically takes the time to find the best deal on whatever the user is looking for. So it takes a couple seconds to actually make the purchase. But if need be, the stand can just purchase the nearest thing that suits the description to save on time. See, this actually seems like, arguably out of all of these, the best like practical use. Like, if you just attain this, this would make your life like so much easier. Like, you would never have to wait for shipping on anything ever again. Like, if I had this stand, I would be like, oh, fuck yeah. Oh wow, this is a long one. Okay, from Nutsy Butsy, stand name Ocean Eyes. Named after Ocean Eyes, which is an album by Owl City. Ocean Eyes has the general appearance of a watery humanoid with tendrils sticking out the sides of its head. While naturally in a liquid state, Ocean Eyes will change to either a solid or gaseous state depending on the temperature of its environment. Aqua Assimilation. In order to manifest, Ocean Eyes must intake water from any open body of water or from water molecules in the atmosphere. Alternatively, Ocean Eyes can manifest using any organic liquid with a majority of its components consisting of water such as bodily fluids. There is no limit to how big or small Ocean Eyes can become aside from metal concentration becoming harder the bigger it becomes. The time it takes to manifest a form is dependent on the availability of water in a surrounding radius of 100 meters. It's worth noting that since Ocean Eyes takes in water and other liquids from its surroundings, foreign objects such as toxins and bacteria will circulate throughout its body and can potentially become transmitted via contact. Ocean Eyes will involuntarily turn into a gaseous or solid state of matter depending on the temperature. It cannot turn back into its default state unless the temperature is returned to room temperature. In its base form, Ocean Eyes functions as an offensive stand capable of getting into fistfights with the ability to fire pressurized blasts of water from its hands, capable of pushing away enemies or being used as propulsion. Doing this takes away from its body volume. Additionally, it can travel through bodies of water at speeds of 40 kilometers an hour, 24 miles an hour. Solid state, upon reaching negative 15 degrees Celsius or 5 degrees Fahrenheit or lower, Ocean Eyes solidifies and becomes more offensively oriented, losing its mobility options, but in turn gaining a more powerful and durable body with the ability to shoot shards of ice at its target. In addition, when taking on water in this form, it can choose to enlarge in specific body parts instead of uniform growth. Gas state, after surpassing 30 Celsius, 86 Fahrenheit, Ocean Eyes evaporates and loses its body, becoming steam in the air. While it can no longer fight one-on-one, -on -one, its speed and range grow considerably. In this state, it can disseminate itself over a radius of 100 feet, shrouding the area in a sauna-like fog, or it can concentrate into a form similar to its base form and pass through targets. Targets it passes through are inflicted with scalding burns that can hover over a target to worsen the burns. Weakness, depending on the water content in the area, it can take a while before Ocean Eyes manifests into a form capable of fighting. Without water, Ocean Eyes is useless. The solid form is significantly slower than the base form and can be outmaneuvered handily. Lastly, the gas form struggles to protect its user in a one-on-one -on -one fight with other offensive stands and relies on hit and run tactics to do any real damage. List of fun stand applications. Creating mustard gas from spare bleach and ocean eyes comprised of urine. Lacing the liquid ocean eyes uses to form something like Kool-Aid and poison any amount of people. Contaminating water supplies using dirty water from other places. Mixing ocean eyes made from vinegar with a plethora of compounds to create an acidic monster. Lots of fun and creative things to do. This stand sounds like a fucking menace. Oh, look how cute he is. He, he reminds me of like a chow from Sonic. I mean, what a cute little guy, right? Like he would never like merge with mustard gas and <laughs> create, just unleash fucking carnage upon populaces. No, never. All right, here we have from Jay Sonata, stand user Rory Rary Edwards. Stand name, you are my sunshine. Primarily a bound stand of a locket that displays which the user laments most on the picture it holds inside. The unbound appearance, in the same way that Anubis has a design besides that of the sword, is that of a small, pale, black, cloaked humanoid stand covered in arrow-like protrusions, with a lower half that resembles a bony, spiraling structure. Besides these key points, it is for the most part nondescript. Ability, Perception Acceleration. 
URMI allows the user to perceive their surroundings more rapidly by accelerating their mental processes, making it seem to them as if the world has slowed down to a crawl. It can range from slight, almost imperceptible slowdown up to a 10 times slowdown. It is activated by the user opening the locket. Due to it being a physically weak stand, the stand is best used for developing strategies on the fly rather than direct engagement. Weaknesses Using the ability for extended periods of time or at a higher intensity can cause blowback to the user's body. Ranging from making them slightly more sluggish with a higher blood pressure and muscle weakness to breakdown of muscle tissue, nausea, and splitting headaches. By the user training their body, these downsides can be mitigated but not outright eliminated. If the locket is damaged or broken, the stand user will be unable to control their stand ability. Yeah, this is pretty cool. It's basically like a beneficial version of the thing Gold Experience does where he punches people and they just like experience shit for way longer. All right, from another JoJo, we have Foreigner. Ability. When the stand makes contact with an object or person, Foreigner is able to instantly change that target's internal temperature. There are a few limits such as only being able to alter a target's temperature once every time they make contact, as well as a built-in limit where Foreigner can only alter up to three target's temperatures at a time. If they exceed that number, the first one will slowly return to their normal temperature, then the next, then the next, until the number has returned to three targets. While using the ability, Foreigner tends to yell out either Foreigner hot-blooded or Foreigner cold as ice. Strengths, potentially a very lethal stand. Giving an enemy heat stroke or hypothermia, even if it wouldn't instantly kill them, it would still make the enemy significantly easier to fight. Also, any aura aura punching from the target could overload a target's nervous system as it tries to comprehend rapidly switching from extreme cold to extreme heat over and over and over again. Under some circumstances, Foreigner is able to act as a support stand as well. By changing the temperature of its user or their allies, they can survive a variety of elements with ease. One detail is that the user of the stand is very much the type to wear shorts and a t-shirt in the middle of winter because they're always able to change just their own temperature accordingly. Weakness. Depending on how severe the user wants to make a target's temperature, more mental and physical strain can be placed on the user. Overusing or trying to keep a target at a very extreme temperature can result in the worst case scenario with the user fainting or even going into cardiac arrest. Aside from its very potent and dangerous ability, Foreigner has little to no tricks to fall back on, leaving it an easy target to dispatch if you're able to find a way to circumvent its ability. It's a frail stand, and one or two really solid blows from a really powerful stand will wipe it out with little issue. Alright, let me check this boy out. Yeah, this is a cool boy. I like his, like, uh, little temperature gauge and how he's always exuding this, like, red and blue smoke. Yeah, that's a cool dude. Alright, here we have one from good old Ryu from Forts. Or if you go by his legal name, Fib. Stand name, Don't Fear the Reaper. Physical appearance, a cloaked humanoid object with a bell where the head should be with a circular handle. The body is draped in a large piece of cloth going down to ground level, with skeletal arms grabbing it emerging from the ground. In a spike collar with the Roman numerals 1 to 13 in between each spike. It also has no canonical color, only because I'm too lazy to, <laughs> to color the picture. Abilities. Every hour for 15 minutes, the shadows of every living being within a half mile diameter from the stand will run with their maximum physical capabilities. Physically disabled people will have an upper hand, so you're safe, Johnny. Towards the stand. If the shadow of the living being reaches the stand within 15 minutes, the living being will die. Weakness. Once the time limit is over, the stand will be completely defenseless. The stand will affect any living being regardless of alignment. The stand also moves extremely slowly, cannot attack any other way, and is physically very weak. Bro, this thing is terrifying. This reminds me of, like, a fucking Bloodborne, like, monster. You just drop this in the middle of some town, and there's going to be fucking carnage. Like, yeah, very monstrous stand, Jesus. Alright, what the hell stand is this? From Morbius x Tsukasa Okino, or V. Physical appearance varies depending on its host's taste, but in most cases they appear as a small humanoid stand with demon-like features and a sadistic personality. In the case of its current host, it resembles their degenerate obsession with the fate version of the Oni Shuten Doji. Ability. The reason you can't open your timeline in public. Weakness. Mental health. This stand cannot affect people with mentally stable minds. Aw, oh, shit, I'm at risk. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> says you should draw big tits on that Pokemon. But I don't want to draw porn anymore. Uh, th this is just like an entirely evil stand. <laughs> it is of no benefit to the user. It's kind of like the opposite of Heia. Like, Heia just whispers like, 
positive encouragement. This stand is just like, you should draw some fat tits. Stand name, Man Who Sold the World. Reference to David Bowie and his song, The Man Who Sold the World. Stand user, Ziggy Stardust. A lanky shirtless figure who has a split between its face and a happy and sad face on either side with a lightning bolt in its chest to leg. <laughs> Colored red and blue with red undies to not show a penis slash vagina. Ability, it can manifest the worst qualities that a person has with the exact same body and everything, almost like an imposter version of that person. It works especially on people who suffer from any type of mental stress or illness. It can affect anyone in a 10 meter area. If the target is particularly strong willed and without any self doubt or mental issues, it poses no problem at all. Depending on the trait, the imposter can potentially be no issue to deal against. The stand itself is also physically weak and not fast enough to dodge or deflect anything. Uh, let's see, Stinky Drink drew his stand. Let's check it out. That's pretty cool. It might be a little hard to make out because it's like in pencil, but yeah, it's swagging. All right, from Crunchy Munch, stand name, Hitostu Futatsu. Hitostu Futast, fuck. Hitostu Futastu by Capsule. The stand has a muscular build. It wears an American football uniform with the, with the Hidate on the waist. I don't know what that is. The shoulder pads also vary in size with each form. The Mitsu form has the smaller shoulder pads with blue and gold color scheme with a hint of purple on the visors. The Kanaban Futsu form has lar larger shoulder pads with a color scheme of black and gold with a hint of white on the visors. It has two forms that allow the user to utilize its powers to fit certain situations that will allow him to win the battle. The user can switch between forms, but he has to wait about a half an hour after one form. Mitsu form. This form allows the stand user to slow the perception of time for the user so he can react better to attacks and counter it when needed. Kanaban Futsu form. This form gives the user analgesia. I don't know what that is. It sounds lewd. Gives the user a boost of adrenaline each time he's hit, which greatly enhances the stand attacks. Weaknesses. Mitsu form. This form only excels in close quarter battles, so it will be easier to snipe the user from a safe distance. The user needs to be very conscious of his environment so he won't be taken by surprise by the attack. If the opponent hits the stand during the slowdown time, it would immediately mess up his perception of time and incapacitate the user. Kanaban Futsu If the user is hit with a fatal attack, the user will get the final boost of adrenaline until it runs out. After it runs out, the user is dead. Jesus. The stand can't do well with binding since it restricts the user's movement. Alright, from Chaotic Evil, we have three cheers. Which is a reference to three cheers for sweet revenge album by my chemical romance appearance the stand looks like two figures a man and a woman they are conjoined but bleeding heavily they have pale white skin and dark black clothing on the man's hand there's a counter of the amount of souls it has taken the stand has two main abilities the first allows it to reverse any damage that is inflicted onto the user however dam damage cannot be reflected when it's inflicted on the stand this ability is called sweet revenge the second ability allows its punches to never stop until the target is dead. This ability is called to the end. The stand also takes the souls of whoever it kills. Damage to the stand cannot be reflected and to the end is still possible to dodge. The stand cannot stop punching from there unless interrupted by a strong attack. If the stand collects a thousand souls, the stand will no longer be of use. The stand will vaporize, which will kill the user. The stand is also very close range and to the end is not the most precise attack. So it, ju it just punches basically infinitely <laughs> until you're dead. It's pretty hardcore. He'll punch you forever and then he'll take your soul. That's crazy. Mike the Wonder Stand, Goodbye Stranger. It would look like a mummy in a business suit holding two brains. The eyes would either glow red or green for approval and red for denial. The stand can steal and swap memories from others, the user included, and transfer them from the past and eventually visions from the future into Act 2 to the present mind of the receiver. If the stand is attacked while negotiating or trading, the attacker will lose an essential memory like eating, <laughs> sleeping, breathing, etc. Nah, you hit me at the wrong time. I forgot how of shit. The memories can cross between both parties. For example, the stand user can receive info on what the other party ate for dinner. The stand has a strict bartering system where you must forget something in order to remember. When trading, the thought must be of equal value. How the hell does that work? How do you determine the value of a thought? But yeah, dude, I'll trade you my memory of my first dog for your memory of getting married. <laughs> like, it's a very abstract stand. All right, from Ogito, we have the stand Wild Rose. Wild Rose has the appearance of a robotic angel with a blank look on its face and a robotic mouth. It has pure white eyes and no pupils. The angel wears a torn up white robe. When activated, the robe evaporates and reveals the stand's deformed body behind it. Oh, this is metal. Rotten skin mixed with large scraps of metal that dig into the stand's skin. 
Whenever the stand opens its mouth to use its abilities, its eyes turn completely black. Wild Rose can lower its jaw to exhale a large amount of dark pink gas. The gas carries with it a very strong disease whose primary purpose is healing. When the virus enters your body, it immediately begins doing things such as healing wounds, regrowing lost tissue, healing illness, etc. If there is nothing to heal, the virus will begin to rapidly grow more flesh all over the body that quickly morphs into new limbs. If a creature is exposed to the virus for long enough, its mental state will quickly begin to deteriorate. It'll lose memories, mental capacity, etc. And the creature will become more animalistic. However, it will gain a form of immortality, as the creature will never experience starvation, thirst, a lack of air, exhaustion from sleep or aging, a creature that has been infected for long enough begin to form bags all over that releases the gas when they pop. Creatures that fully succumb to the virus will instinctually seek to spread the infection by any means necessary. They cannot be directly controlled by the user, however the user will be ignored by these creatures and is completely immune to this version of the virus. Where the wild roses grow is a special attack the stand can perform. The stand prepares a large amount of gas and unleashes it into the atmosphere, causing a large pink cloud to form. This cloud will quickly begin to rain a dark pink liquid that contains a fast-acting version of the virus. The rain will last for 15 minutes and a single drop it from it is enough to make a creature fully succumb to the virus within 30 seconds. The bad seed is a special strain of the virus that can be used on the user themselves. The stand infects the user and causes them to grow additional limbs such as giant fleshy hands, tentacles, or even wings. This is horrifying. The user feels unimaginable pain when these limbs are being formed or being used in any way. And if used for too long, it can also cause the user to go unconscious or even die from the pain. Weakness, the stand is pretty much impossible to control and will not discriminate against any living being. You can die from overuse of bad seed. This just sounds like a fucking Resident Evil game turned into a stand. This dude's going around dropping fucking G-Virus and shit. Alright, here comes our next stand. Drexel Noob wrote a whole ass bible about it. Stand name, Scarecrow. A humanoid covered in ratty stitched together clothes of many different colors and a hood over their head. If you were to look into the hood, all you would see is a black void. He's wearing a straw hat on top of the hood. Out of the sleeves of the shirt are arms and clawed hands that look like they are made of hay. Out of the pant legs are taloned bird's feet also made out of hay. Stage 1, Scarecrow. Scarecrow is always in stage 1 by default. While in this stage, the stand is basically useless. But if its user is about to be injured and the user is aware of it, they can activate stage 1's ability. Scarecrow can teleport the user a few feet away and disguise itself as the user, taking the full force of the hit without the damage being transferred to the user. This then allows Scarecrow to go into stage 2. Stage 2, Tear Crow. Once Scarecrow has taken enough damage, it can be rid of its disguise and reveal its true form. In this form, it can now move away from its user and be controlled by them, allowing it to nimbly move around, allowing it to nimbly move around and try to cut through its enemies with its claws and talons. Because it's made of hay, any damage done to the stand isn't reflected on the user, although regrowing limbs does physically exhaust the user. In this form it can also instantly swap places with its user making getting use of in this form it can also instantly swap places with its user making getting its user out of danger very easy but if the stand user is somehow injured directly then scarecrow will enter stage 3 Stage 3 Nightmare Crow If the stand user is injured directly then scarecrow will transform into its final form the hay parts of his body will turn black and become feathery and its arms will transform into wings. In this form, Scarecrow can fly and has its range and speed increased. Its feathers are razor sharp and can be launched at its opponents, or it can use its wings like blades if the enemy is close. But the number of feathers is finite and if too many are used, Scarecrow will no longer be able to fly. This stage retains the ability to swap places with its user, but now any damage done to the stand will be reflected onto the user as well. As a last ditch ever, Scarecrow can regrow all of its feathers to launch them all at once in an attack known as Blackout Razor Wind. When this is done, the feathers cut through the wind, allowing them to shape it into a vortex to trap the enemy in it and cut them up with feathers and wind. Although the cost of this is that many cuts will appear on the user's arms, causing a great amount of blood loss, and Scarecrow is reverted back to stage 2 and cannot transform into stage 3 again until the user has rested for an appropriate amount of time. When the user has not used Scarecrow for more than 30 minutes, it reverts back to stage 1. Weakness, as the user cannot voluntarily switch between stages, an enemy who is aware of Scarecrow's abilities can use that to their advantage. If a sneak attack is launched onto the user, they won't be able to activate Scarecrow. Also, if a stand is better at winning by causing damage over tiring out the enemy stand, forcing Scarecrow into going into stage 3 by attacking the user will, be, will make damaging both easier. 
Stage 2 is also vulnerable to range stand users as it only has a range of 1.5 meters, meaning that unless the user puts themselves in harm's way to trigger the stand, Stage 2 is also vulnerable to range stand users as it only has a range of 1.5 meters, meaning that unless the user puts themselves in harm's way to trigger Stage 3, a range stand can outlast Scarecrow. Alright, here we have Shady and his stand, It Must Be Magic. Namesake, It Must Be Magic by Tina Marie. It Must Be Magic was developed to help its user hone their craft, in this case being a professional magician. Swap, it has the ability to swap the places of any two objects or people it or its user touches, including themselves. The only limitations are that the objects must be within the stand's range of 10 meters and must not be rooted to the earth itself, like trees. Revolution, the stand also has the ability to place everything it has swapped back into its original position, all at once. Everything that is affected by this is also restored to its original condition. Weakness, the stand can hold its own if needed, but it's not a particularly strong stand. Its user would be best to rely on tricks and avoid direct confrontation. Since its range is on the shorter side, if the user is brought to an isolated area with no objects to take advantage of, like an open field or an empty room, its abilities would be very limited, close to useless. A revolution restores all objects and people affected by it to their previous condition with no exception. This means if the user is engaged in battle and has at any point swapped its opponents, it may end up healing them. The user must carefully plan their swaps if they intend to use this ability. Best used as a last resort. Yeah, so it's kind of like a like a really large scale crazy diamond, basically. We got some art. This is a cool looking dude. I like his color scheme. Alright, from Zykolos, Wonder of Tomboys, stand name Afterlife. Named after Afterlife by Avenged Sevenfold. It shares an appearance most commonly seen in depictions of Satan. Red skin, blue eyes, huge red arms, a backpack the same size as his upper body, a 20 pound weight on the backpack, gun, and holster. What kind of depiction of Satan have you been seeing that has a backpack? Abilities used to confuse the enemy and let both the user and stand attack at various angles. Nightmare, the stand is able to inflict the target's mind with certain vapors released from the stand. If the target's eyes are open and they receive this vapor, they begin to have hallucinations. First off, the user of the stand disappears entirely from the target's sight and instead the stand, afterlife, is seen as the user. Hail to the King, the stand's secondary ability lets it separate itself into multiple pieces, and each separate piece can move independently. These pieces can range from large pieces to much smaller ones depending on the user's preference of the situation. These pieces can also float but only about 3 meters off the ground. The full range of where the pieces can fully move to is about 20 meters. Weakness, if the target is blind or is wearing goggles, the stand's first ability is rendered useless. If a piece of the stand is hit while it is not larger than a total of one fifth of the total stand size, it is rendered useless for eight minutes. Now look at this stand, bro. <laughs> now the look of the stand user himself is fucking perfect. Yo, the design of a fucking Jojo Land's main bad guy just got leaked. All right, from Chad Cell, we have Polka Party by Weird Al. Appearance, a mildly muscular humanoid stand. Its largest features are its large deformed back and long pointed tail. The left arm is shriveled up near the waist and tears off, only being connected to the hand by small orbs. Yeah, I got the same problem. It wears a translucent glowing cape and blade-like spikes all over in varying sizes. Many pieces of cloth are impaled by the spikes. Its mouth is stitched together and its eyes stay closed with a peaceful expression. The main body is desaturated, but it has multicolored glowing markings. The hands are slightly larger than average, and the head is slightly smaller than average. Its headpiece resembles a jester's hat. Ability, Bouncy Orbs. Polka Party has the ability to control 10 hard titanium balls freely in the air. Each of the 10 balls is tied to a finger of Polka Party. Although not buoyant, the balls will bounce when hitting a surface and have trajectory controlled by the finger tied to the ball. Every time a ball bounces, it gains weight and speed. With about 10 bounces, a ball can break rocks, and with 50, they can instantly shatter a skull. They can normally float in the air and fly with control from the finger, but heavier balls take more strength to control. Each ball's power groove is tied specifically to the individual finger and will quickly power down when not in motion. Polka Party's body has no range, but the deployed balls have a range of up to 50 meters. The more balls deployed at once bring down their range to a minimum of 25 meters. Polka Party's body has no range, but the deployed balls have a range of up to 50 meters. However, the more balls deployed at once bring down the range to a minimum of 25 meters. The color of each orb is matched by the marking on the finger that controls it. The colored marks on the finger grow closer to the palm when they gain power. Weakness, the sand's main body is a close range type that lacks the physical strength of a typical one. Although the balls can be recalled to each finger in an instant, when another stand catches a ball, it cannot be recalled and the finger tied to it will freeze in position for the stand and user. 
If a finger is broken or dislodged, the ball tied to the finger is harder to use and far slower. When a hand is decapitated, all five balls are lost and the stand range is permanently shortened as if the five balls were deployed. Although the balls having a glow around them allows them to hurt eyes when moving fast, they are obvious to spot and catch with good reflexes. Disco Ball, a signature technique or realized potential of Polka Party. With a target trapped in a room using walls as six surfaces, all ten orbs are deployed and the user begins rapidly shaking and spazzing their hands causing the fingers to control the balls wildly and unpredictably. They continue bouncing off of each other and walls getting exponentially faster and stronger. Yeah, let's check this boy out. This is a cool boy. All right, here's art of Zenobia stand. All right, so Silver has created by far the most deadly stand. Stand name, waving my dick in the wind. Physical appearance, little dude chilling with he cock out. Abilities, he waves his dick in the wind and you die. Weakness, bro, he is waving his dick in the wind. What are you gonna do about it? I think it's important that we read the stats. Power, very. Speed, whatever you want, uh-huh. Range, longer than yours. Stamina, I can do this all day. Precision, ask your mom, Lamau. Development potential, he has done, he has peaked. He's the apex of Sutando evolution. None can even glimpse the sheer power of this man. Let me check him out. Look, there he goes. He waving his, he, he waving he dick in the wind. All right, here we go. We're in the final stretch here. Oh yeah, here's the art of Nino Stan. I like his big, like, cross-shaped cock ring <laughs> oh i think you yeah you've definitely written the longest summary out of all of them stand name judas priest user nino kamakura ability stand ability memorization judas priest has the ability to copy the abilities of specifically humanoid stands in order to copy stand abilities the user must make the user confess their sins the darker the sin the more powerful the ability copied for example, Nino can make Jotaro confess that he stole a school computer when he was in the 8th grade, and then blamed a fellow student for the crime. He could copy Starfinger, but if he could make him cough up that he killed his great-great-grand-uncle, that's more likely to give him access to Time Stop. Incidentally, if the user Judas Priest is trying to copy only has one or two abilities, the rule still holds, and Nino can only copy them if they confess a sin of suitable severity to, to, the, to the corresponding ability. So basically, if you only have one ability, then there's no sense in, like, trying to get more shit out of them, basically. It's worth noting that the specific context of the sin doesn't matter. So in JP's eyes, killing a man is still killing a man, even if it's your worst enemy or best friend. There's no real limit on how many abilities JP can memorize, and he can even string together or simply combine stand abilities that are compatible. Like using Hierophant Green and Red Hot Chili Pepper to create a web of electricity. Furthermore, as the abilities are memorized and not copied, the abilities remain with the user for as long as they live, unless very specific circumstances are met. The user must make it clear that he's asking someone to confess their sins. He can't just overhear the target admitting to them by eavesdropping. If a person admits to a sin, he can memorize an ability of corresponding power if available. However, if a person lies either by saying they've never committed a sin or they make up a false sin, his most powerful ability activates. Immortal Sin. Activated if the confessor lies either by making up something or saying they've never done anything wrong, at which point JP memorizes every ability the user possesses bar none. Still only works on humanoid stand users. As stated above, only works on humanoid stands, so non-humanoid and phenomenon stands pose the greatest threat. Alright, so I'll be 100. I've been reading these for several hours and I think I'm about to die. So I, <laughs> I think I'll just leave the rest of the minutia in text here. So yeah, if you want to read the rest of it, please uh, pause and check it out. I'll, I'll read the Judas Judas Priest Requiem. Judas Priest Requiem, if such a stand ever came into existence, it would give the user the ability Metal Messiah. You sound like attacks a fucking Guilty Gear character would have, which would allow them to learn and subse subsequently memorize all of a humanoid stand user's abilities by touching them, which would instantly reveal the full extent of someone's sins to Nino. It would also work on non-stand and non-humanoid stand users, just without the ability to then copy the corresponding abilities. Incidentally, touching a sinless person doesn't result in losing any stands like pre-Requiem J JP would, although a person can still repent for their sins which would cause JP Requiem to lose access to all their copied abilities from that specific target. Nino can then use JP Requiem to increase the power of any and all copied abilities in a sort of positive feedback loop, with the abilities becoming more powerful each time they are used ad infinitum. The increase in power of the stand's memorized abilities follow a cubic growth model. I don't even know what that is. Nino no longer receives any recoil from using a stand ability whatsoever. Alright, from Filthy Grandma, stand name, Pinkerton. Appearance, an astronaut suit with a pizza eggshell inside with front abdomen resembling a butterfly pattern. The legs form a spiral giving off a wheelchair look. Ability, married in my mind. Pinkerton enters into eggs. Be that- <laughs> What? Be that women, birds, snakes, etc. 
After crawling into the eggs, we'll make a future fully developed version of the offspring that will try to attach to the parent. But wait, what? Blasting off together to space. The infants will be hatched from the cockpit of the stand. I feel like I'm on a drug trip. What? What if the parent is already dead or processed? <laughs> what do you mean processed? The children will still chase after their mother. If Pingerdin's ability is activated toward a person who's eating chicken nugget, those chicks will hunt that poor bystander and blast them off to space. The ability can only be used one mother at a time. Yeah, we're taking over the world one mother at a time. However, emphasis on the word one. The sand can use as many eggs that the mother has the potential to produce. For example, a dozen eggs from a hen. If the mother is unable to give birth, Pingerton will not affect them. The stand will be defeated. If the stand user is incapacitated, turns it off, or the mother or bystander who's holding the mother is shipped off to space. Okay, so the ability is largely incomprehensible, but the stand looks really, really cool. This remind this definitely reminds me of like just some weird ass fucking stand Araki would design. Just these like eggshell looking kind of they kind of look like scales. Kind of thing coming out of like a suit. Uh here's an updated image of All-Star. Alright, we're down to our final two here. Sneaky Snack, Modern Love. Modern Love has an androgynous body type and has a more robotic look to them. They wear striking red dance shoes, very loose and free blue pants, and an unbuttoned blue vest. Any part of the body not in clothing is completely silver colored. Across Modern Love's blank face is a red lightning bolt. Their right index finger is a record player needle. Finally, the center of their chest is, a perfectly sh is perfectly shaped in a way so that a vinyl record can fit into it. Ability, let's dance. In order to trigger the ability, the stand user must get whoever the target is to agree to dance with them. Once they agree, Modern Love will make a vinyl record, place it at the center of their chest, and put their needle finger on it, beginning to play the very basics of a song. Once the song starts, the target is forced to dance and they have no control over their body. The way the target dances during this is in a way that truly represents who they are as a person and exactly how they feel. During this, the user must dance with their now designated dance partner. The user must be in sync with their partner and dance well with them. The better the user dances with their partner, the better and more complete the song will be. Once the target finishes their dance, the song is complete and it will sound like the best representation of the target's life. If the stand user dance well with a target and demonstrate a complete understanding of their partner, the song will turn out not only great, but will also contain a perfect copy of every memory the target has had on both a conscious and subconscious level. The vinyl record once created can then be played on any record player, and the stand user can see all available memories of the target on the vinyl record while listening to it. This ability can only be used once per person. Weakness, Modern Love is very much meant for utility and lacks in the combat department. They are only as strong as their user is, so any fight with more combat-oriented stands is not advised. In addition, the amount of information the stand can put into the song is entirely dependent on how good their stand user is at dancing and understanding their dance partner's movement. If the user fails this step, the vinyl record will get scratched to hell and sound horrid, leaving little to no memories copied from the target. The stand's effectiveness is entirely reliant on the user's skill at dancing and reading people leading to a varying amount of results for how a song turns out. Since the ability can only ever be used once per person, the stand user must make sure they make their dance with them count, or else whatever the state the vinyl record and memories are in will forever remain that way. Yo, let's check this boy out. Yo, those pants are sick, bro. I like his heels. All right, here we go. Our final stand from Ryan. Stand name, Hurt So Good, named after Hurt So Good by John Mellencamp. The stand can shift between two different appearances depending on which form it's in. In pain mode, the stand takes the form of a robotic nurse with traditional scrubs as well as a hat with a red cross on it. I'm um, actually, this design violates the Geneva Convention. You're not allowed to have the red cross on things that aren't for serious, okay? I don't even know if that's actually a true fact. I just see that repeated often. Like, you're not actually supposed to put the red cross on shit that's like not real medical, like wartime kind of stuff. I don't know how true that is, but... In one of its hands, it holds a large syringe filled with a green liquid. In pleasure mode, the stand takes on a humanoid, beast-like appearance with fur covering its body and large metal claws extending from the hands. The phase of this form is still robotic. Abilities, pain conversion. Hurt So Good's main ability is to convert pain into pleasure and converting pleasure into pain. This ability can only be applied to one target at a time and it has a range of approximately 20 meters. To complement this double-sided ability, the stand has two different forms. Pain mode has healing capabilities. The stand can inject a target with a substance from its syringe. Any wounds the target has received are healed over time as the substance is injected. Along with the physical healing, the target feels an overwhelming amount of relief. When combined with pain conversion, this can cause intense agony to the target receiving healing. 
The other mode, Pleasure Mode, is focused on offense. It gains increased power and speed at the cost of a much shorter range. Pleasure Mode has large metallic claws to dig into the target, which when combined with pain conversion causes a large amount of pleasure in the target, which could be used to disguise the fact that they're being damaged or could serve as a distraction in the middle of combat. Weakness, Pain Conversion is a powerful ability when it comes to messing with the target's head in and out of combat. However, the target is aware of the trick it may be easier to overcome. Along with this, Pain Mode has weak offensive abilities and is almost useless in battle. Pleasure Mode is strong in combat but has incredibly short range, which can put the user at risk as well as making it easy to escape if the user isn't smart about their positioning. And here's art done by Tumbleweed. Yeah, look at those fine fellas. Alright, there we go, we reached the end of it. You know, when I first, like, sat down to record these, I was like, oh god, there's a lot of these. There's quite a few stands in here. Alright, so I gotta say, some of y'all have no restraint whatsoever when it comes to designing abilities. Like, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure has a lot of, like, really busted stands, but some of these are just cracked as hell, bro. Like, Heart, for example, this is a pretty balanced stand, right? Fire that spreads forever, but, like, you gotta put it out all at once if you want it to stop. And then we have bullshit, like, waving my dick in the wind, like... How is anybody supposed to deal with this? He waves his dick in the wind and you die. But yeah, no, this is fun. Thank you to everybody who submitted a stand. Especially nice job to everybody who decided to like draw their own or got somebody to draw it for them. These designs are all super, super cool. Once again, big shout out to Fib. Let me pull up my, my wonderful stand. Oh, I love him so much. Yeah, there he is. What a cool guy. I don't know if I, I think I forgot to mention this, but his color scheme, he basically just has Bedman's color scheme. I imagine this was a pain in the ass to draw, like... I remember when I was first kind of conceptualizing it, I, the main thing I wanted was little discs that connect to like each joint. And I was like, oh God, whoever has to draw this is going to suffer because they're going to have to draw these discs over and over and over again. But no, this thing turned out so fucking cool. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching. Especially a big thank you to my channel members. But yeah, I'll see you guys next time.